Hello and welcome to this video that's part of the series of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure in 7 Steps. In this episode, you will learn all about all of the Oracle Cloud compute, storage and networking services. My name is Richard Garsteken and I am one of the technical cloud experts within Oracle. And I will be showing you today what these compute, storage and networking services are all about and how you can use them. I will not just be explaining this to you, but I also will give you a full demonstration of what this looks like in the Oracle Cloud Console. Now, this video is part of a series of seven videos that will talk about all kinds of topics of the Oracle Cloud. So things like security, governments, all of our other platform services that we have in the Oracle Cloud, uh, how you can deploy modern cloud applications on the Oracle Cloud. So I really hope that you also watch all of the other episodes so you can get familiar across all of the services that we have to offer in the Oracle Cloud. But let's first start with this compute, storage and networking. One thing I really want to get aside is that the Oracle Cloud is really designed to run any kind of workload. Now, I know that maybe the name might suggest that you should be deploying your Oracle workloads in the Oracle Cloud, but you can really run any kind of workload. And the Oracle Cloud really from the ground up has been designed to do this. So from Windows applications, .NET applications, to modern cloud native container applications or serverless applications, and anything in between, you can run on top of the Oracle Cloud. And of course, we do also welcome any Oracle specific workload like Oracle databases, Oracle applications, and we even have very specific platform services for those applications as well. And you can find more about that in some of the other episodes of this series. But let's start off with this core component of compute. Compute really allows you to run any type of application in the Oracle Cloud. And in the Oracle Cloud, we provide a very wide range of compute services. This can be a classical virtual machine, but it could also be a bare metal server. The Oracle Cloud from the ground up has been fundamentally been differently built than any other public cloud. In the Oracle Cloud, we don't use a virtualization stack to manage our resources. So we as Oracle don't need to have any piece of software on top of the resource to be able to deliver that resource as a service to you. And therefore we can deliver a bare metal server as a service to our customers. That means on that bare metal server, we as Oracle do not need to be present. Uh, you can install your own operating system on top of that. Uh, you can run your own virtualization stack on top of that. So we support Hyper-V, KVM, Oracle VM, and VMware. You can run your own container platform on that. You can really do whatever you want with that server. Now we also use offer ready to use platform services like container platform services and serverless platform services. So really any kind of application from a very classical application that needs to be deployed in a virtual machine to running your own bare metal service with your own private cloud on it to modern cloud native applications, all of these functionalities are available in the Oracle Cloud. And we provide different uh, processor architectures to run these workloads for you. We both have AMD and Intel processors uh, and you can even get them with things like GPU cards or local storage, depending on what kind of performance that you're requiring. And soon we'll also be offering up ARM processors um, in our cloud for very proce processor intensive applications. So with this very large menu of compute services, as I said, you can really run any kind of workload in the Oracle Cloud. Now, traditionally in other clouds, when you see these type of services, then when you click on one particular type of architecture that you would like to run your workload in, you have to choose this kind of t-shirt size model where you want to have small, medium, or large. In the Oracle Cloud, we offer something very unique here. We offer the concept of flexible compute, both for Intel and AMD shapes. And with these Intel and AMD shapes, you don't have this small, medium, large kind of t-shirt model anymore, but you can specifically right size the amount of resource that you want for your workload. So if you want to have a compute environment that has maybe lots of CPU, but very little memory, you can specify that. Or if you want to have lots of memory and very little CPU, you can specify that. So instead of having to choose between just small, medium or large, we offer per processor shape more than 50,000 different combinations to make sure that you can right size the workload that you need. And therefore, of course, make it much more economical 
um, for you to run. You're not wasting any other memory or CPU that your application might not, needs, might not need. A very unique functionality of the Oracle Cloud is right sizing with these flexible compute shape for both Intel and AMD processors. Next to compute, we of course also offer a very right range of storage services. From local storage services like local NVMe access, to block storage, remote storage, and file storage services, and object storage services, to very high performance file systems, but also things like archive storage for backups or for long-term retention of data. Uh, and we even provide a facility that you can actually physically import your data into the Oracle Cloud using the data transfer, transfer service. So with this complete storage portfolio, we can really facilitate, again, any type of workload in the Oracle Cloud. From very small, uh, virtual machines or physical machines that don't require that much storage interaction to very high performance workloads that require massive amount of disk I.O. All of these services are available in the Oracle Cloud ready for you to use, again, to really support that any kind of workload can land in the Oracle Cloud. Now, the last thing that you probably need, of course, is networking. And when you run all these compute machines with storage, they also need to be networked up. And again here, the Oracle Cloud is very flexible. In the Oracle Cloud, you can create, define your own networks, something that we call a virtual cloud network, a VCN. And inside that VCN, you can create your own subnets, you can create your own security rules about who can talk to what. And we do use in the Oracle Cloud a least privilege model, meaning that by default, nothing is allowed and everything that you do want to allow, you need to specifically specify. Now, as, said, as part of this series, there's a dedicated session on security. So if you have more interest in learning about that, definitely watch that session. The networking, of course, is all also about interconnectivity. So besides being able to create your own virtual cloud networks that allow you to deploy your virtual machines and your bare metal servers into, you also probably want to connect those networks up to maybe on-premise networks. And we can facilitate that with VPN tunnels, but also things like a fast connect where you can have a dedicated line between your own on-premise data center and the Oracle Cloud. Additionally, we also provide all kinds of other networking services that you can use as a front end for your applications. Things like an HTTP or a TCP load balancer, a web application firewall that can help you with DDoS protection and can truly inspect all of your HTTP traffic that nothing is really going wrong. Uh, we provide DNS services. So really a rich portfolio to design your own network, to control the connectivity between the Oracle Cloud and maybe your on-premise environment, and really again facilitate that any kind of workload with any kind of network requirement can be deployed inside the Oracle Cloud. So all in all, that's really what the Oracle Cloud is about. A cloud platform that really allows you to run any kind of workload from very classical, maybe low performance type of applications to the most high performance, most demanding applications in respectively, if that is Windows based, Java based, Python based, container based, or whatever architecture based. The Oracle Cloud is designed to run any kind of workload very easily at a very efficient cost model around the globe. Today, other companies have already started to use the Oracle Cloud for their demanding environments. Companies like Zoom that had, since Corona, of course, a massive explosion of customers that wanted to work online. To be able to deal with that kind of size and that kind of growth, they started to adopt the Oracle Cloud to very fastly provision additional worker nodes for their conferencing platform. And the Oracle Cloud was really able to provide Zoom with a platform that can really deliver this at very high performance, at very low cost. Another example is Cisco. Cisco runs a titration platform for their customers and they offer this up as a SaaS service. A service that allows them to inspect the customer's networks and really detect if something is going wrong. Now this is a very intensive process. They use a lot of AI machine learning concepts to inspect all of this traffic. Again, they were looking for a platform that could really run very high performance compute workloads at a very efficient cost. And therefore they also have chosen the Oracle Cloud as their platform to deliver this service on. So enough slides, let me actually show you the Oracle Cloud and what that compute storage and networking is like. What you see here is the main landing page when you have logged in to the Oracle Cloud. 
you see here on the right, uh, some basic billing information. Uh, on the top here, I can select the region I'm working in. And on the left side here, we have what we call the American Hamburger menu, where you'll see all of the services in the Oracle Cloud. So here I have my compute services, I have my storage services, my network services, and you'll see all kinds of other services. So there's also a menu specifically for databases and for Oracle databases, uh, for hybrid cloud solutions like deploying VMware in the Oracle Cloud, uh, analytic services, etc. Now, the first thing that we need to do is before we deploy any resource um, is to create a network, a network that these resources can be deployed into. So I can go to the Virtual Cloud Networks menu. And here I am presented with two options. I can create a Virtual Cloud Network, um, or even easier, I can create a wizard to create a Virtual Cloud Network. So in my case, I'll choose the, the, the VCN wizard uh, to create my virtual cloud network. And it provides me with two different templates. Uh, one template where it will create a virtual cloud network with both a public network segment and a private network segment inside of it. And I have an option to create a network that is also connected over an IPsec tunnel uh, to my on-premise environment. Now I'll start off with first this basic um, uh, virtual cloud network. I'll give my network a name, demo network. And I uh, can configure uh, in what CIDR range I want this network to be deployed. And it already comes with some default IP addresses uh, as a suggestion. But I can make this into anything uh, that I would like it to be. It will give me all the information. And I'll just click on Create. And that is all to it. Um, this creates fully automatically my virtual cloud network. It creates two subnets inside of that. It will make sure that for the public uh, cloud network, for the public subnet, uh, an internet gateway has been created. It will make sure that for the private subnet, a net gateway service is, is created. Um, and that's all to it. Here you see an overview now of this demo network. I have my two subnets. Uh, and I have an internet gateway that will route traffic to the internet for the public uh, subnet. And I will have a net gateway uh, for the private network subnet. The next step is that I can create compute instances um, inside this network. So we can go to the Compute Cloud service, and we can click here on Instances. For me to create a new Compute Instance is easy. I'll click on the Create Instance button, and I'll give my uh, Compute Instance a name. For instance, I'll make this into, for instance, a web server. So I'll call this a Web Server 1. I can choose in which availability domain um, I want to deploy this. In this case, I'm actually working in the Frankfurt region, and the Frankfurt region has three availability domains. Now, then I can choose the operating system that I would like to use. Um, so I can choose Oracle Linux, I can choose Windows, and if I choose Windows, I can choose what version of Windows I would like to have. Or in my case, I'm a big Ubuntu fan, I can choose that I want to run Ubuntu. Again here, I can choose what version I want to run, and I'll select that image. Now, besides these pre-made operating system images, um, you will also find that there are Oracle images um, provided in as a library. And there's also a marketplace um, where partners can provide all kinds of images. So here you see an overview of other kind of pre-made images that you can actually use uh, to deploy your compute instances. Now in my case, I, said I just want to have um, this Ubuntu virtual machine. So I'll go back to platform links. I'll select my Ubuntu and select image. The next choice that I have is, is what type of compute shape I would like to have. And I can click on Change Shape. And as I said, one really big difference um, within the Oracle Cloud is that we don't just have this T-shirt concept where you have to choose between small, medium, or large. Uh, but I can really choose a flexible shape. So in my case here, I'm using an E3 shape. And I can say I would like to have, for instance, uh, four, virtual, four CPUs, four OCPUs. So that's four CPU cores with high threading, so eight actual threads for my CPU. And in my case, I'm gonna run a web server. I don't need that much memory for that. So I'm going to tune down the memory for this virtual machine to eight gigabytes of RAM. There we go. Um, I wanna deploy this in my network. Um, uh, so in my VCN that I just created, my demo net, and here I can choose in which subnet. Now I want this to be a web server. I can choose that web server actually to be deployed both in a private or in a public subnet. Um, and for me now, I'll first deploy this into a public subnet so I have directly uh, public access, public internet access to this uh, compute instance. 
the third step uh, it will ask me for is to create um, uh, or to supply an SSH key. Uh, and this will be the key for me to, to be able to log into this uh, virtual machine. Now I can create these keys locally and then upload them so that Oracle ne never has had my private keys. So it's completely secure. No one besides myself can have access to this environment. Or if I don't know how to create these keys, I can actually ask Oracle to create these keys for me. So here I have an option to create these, care, uh, these SSH key pairs. So I can um, click on save the private key. I can also save the public key if I want to. Uh, and that will give me later on access um, to this virtual machine. And that's it. I'll click on the create uh, button and it will now start provisioning um, this virtual machine. Now this takes around 40 seconds uh, for this virtual machine to be up and running um, and then I can log into this machine um, and uh, start configuring my web server and, and do things with that. You start seeing that some of the information is already uh, uh, being provided so you'll see here what the private IP address will be and what the public IP address will be so I'll copy that one over um, and uh, you'll see where it is in the process of creating this virtual machine. Um, Ah, it's already completed, so now if I go back to my instance details, you'll see that this virtual machine uh, is ready to run. So if I now open up a, a command prompt, um, I can actually um, now log into this uh, machine. I can do SSH. I can identify with the key that I um, uh, have just um, downloaded, and I'll uh, log into OPC, uh, sorry, Ubuntu at the IP address of my machine. I accept the key. And there we have it right now. I have just literally in under a minute created a compute instance um, that I can now log into. Now I have a default script uh, that will automatically configure this as a uh, web server. So let me just uh, get that. And this will automatically um, deploy an Apache server in here and create a default web page just for demonstration purposes. So the web server is installed. Um, so if I now actually, again, uh, take this public IP address and I'll try to open that in my web page, you'll see that actually uh, nothing is opening up. And that is because within the Oracle Cloud, we use a least privilege model. And that means by default, um, nothing has access to this virtual machine except what is specifically specified. So for me to open up like port 80 so I can actually have um, uh, internet connectivity to this machine, I can open up a web page. Um, I can actually go to the subnet. And in here I have a few options on how I can configure this. One of the options that I have is something called a security list. And in this security list here, you see that there's already one default rule created, uh, port 22 for SSH access. This is why I was allowed to SSH into this virtual machine. But besides that, nothing else um, is allowed. Uh, well, besides also some IC ICPM uh, pink holes. So for me to give access uh, that I can actually open up this web page, um, all I have to do is I can create a new rule. I can say, uh, well, from anywhere, um, I would like anything on port 80 to be allowed. Uh, HTTP traffic. And I'll create that rule. Now if I go back to this uh, page here and I will reload, you'll see that I now have access um, uh, to this machine. It's a VM standard E3 flex machine. It's running in Frankfurt domain with this Ubuntu system. And literally in under two minutes, I now have a, a new compute instance up and running uh, inside the Oracle Cloud as a web server. Now to enhance this a little bit further, um, I've already now created also a second web server in the same concept. So I have now two of these virtual machines uh, running a web server. If I want to make this available as a redundant service, I can now just go to my networking services and actually create a network load balancer in front of those two virtual machines. So I can click on the create load balancer option. And again, here I have two different choices I can make. I can have an HTTP load balancer or a network load balancer, which allows me um, to load balance any kind of TCP uh, protocols. In my case, I'm running a web server, so I'll just choose the HTTP uh, load balancer. I'll give it a name and I want to make it publicly uh, available. I have the choice between flexible shapes uh, and dynamic shapes. With flexible shapes, the load balancer will automatically scale up or down depending on the bandwidth. Or with a dynamic shape, I can actually choose the total amount of bandwidth that I would like to have. 
Now, in my case, I like to be flexible, so I'll just choose the flexible shape. I say that my minimum bandwidth should be 10 megabits per second, and I want my uh, maximum bandwidth, for instance, to be 450 uh, megabits per second. I'll click on Next. Um, it asks me for the, the load balancing uh, algorithm, um, weighted round robin, that is fine with me. Um, and I can add the backend of my servers. So I select the two web servers that I've just created as the backend uh, for my load balancer. Um, I'll press by, I'll specify how the load balancer can check that these virtual machines are properly running. Um, and I'll click on Next. Then I'll create a listener. So this is the actual the front end of the load balancer. This, this is the web server uh, pool listener and I can choose if I want to have that on HTTP or HTTPS um, and I can create a key for that now in my case I don't have any keys yet created so I'll just deploy an HTTP uh, web server and it will now co-create um, the load balancer for me so now that the load balancer is created we can see the public IP address of the load balancer. And if I now open up a web page to that uh, page, you'll see that I get to my web server. And this is now load balance. So if I refresh the page, you'll see based on the round robin concept here that it is switching between server one and server two. So in that way, I can very easily create a pool um, of web servers, have a load balancer sit in front of that, uh, and all build this in a few minutes in the Oracle Cloud. Now to even make this look more professional, I can also do my DNS management from within the Oracle Cloud. So I can go to my networking and I can go to my zones overview. And here I can add now this IP address, I can do my DNS management to a domain name. So I have my domain here, I can click on that. And I can go to my records and I'll add a record. In my case, an A type and I will call this demo. And I'll give it the IP address of my load balancer. And I want to have a 300 second time to live. I'll publish this. So if I now open up through my web browser demo.ocirox.com, I now as again get to my load balancer and everything is organized. So from creating compute instances, putting load balancers in front of it, putting a DNS entry in front of it, and even creating things like web application firewalls, all that can be done in just a few clicks within the Oracle Cloud Console. So when this is now all up and running, of course, I also want to make sure that I back up my web server. So I can go to my uh, storage um, services, and here I can, for instance, define very easily my backup policies that I would like to have. By default, there are already three um, predefined uh, backup policies made, but I can create my own as well. So I can say my uh, backup policy for my web servers. And I can define a schedule here. So I can say I want to have um, a daily backup um, at midnight, and I want to have three days retention, and I want that to be incremental, and I want to have maybe uh, once a month a full backup um, scheduled as well. So now if I go back to the storage and I go to the block volumes, this is where I'll find um, my disks. Uh, in my case, I will go to the boot volume. So I'll see the, the disks of my web servers here. I can click on that and I can now just go here and edit and I can apply that backup policy that I want to have for this environment. I can do the same thing for my other web server. Uh, click on edit, apply the same backup policy. And that all, that's all it takes automatically to provide um, a backup policy fully automatically arranged for these web servers. Now, besides running standard normal compute VMs or bare metal servers, I can deploy my workloads in. I can also create my own virtualization stack in the Oracle Cloud. We support Hyper-V, KVM, Oracle VM, and VMware, and specifically for VMware, we have a dedicated service. I can find it here under the hybrid cloud called the Oracle Cloud VMware solution. And here I can create a software-defined data center. So I can give it a name, Oracle Cloud VMware solution. Um, I can choose a particular version of VMware I would like to run. 
uh, the matching uh, billing model that I would like to have for it and how many ESX servers I would like to have. I'll specify a few more information about networking and then fully automatically we create a VMware offering for you. Now this takes about three hours to do. In my case, I already have one of those environments provisioned in a different compartment. You see it here called OCVS. And here I have a fully provisioned VMware environment. So it's running on three bare metal servers, OCVS 1, 2, and 3. And these are very powerful bare metal servers. They are 52 cores, 768 gigabytes of RAM, and each server has 51 terabyte of local NVMe storage. So when that's created, I can just click on the vCenter link. And if I click on that, I'll just get a normal VMware environment that I can now log into. And this is standard straightforward uh, VMware meaning that I have full access to the VMware stack. I have full administrative privileges uh, on the ESXi hosts. I have full privileges on uh, the vCenter. I have full privilege on NSXT. And here I can create, again, my own virtual machines now just using normal VMware tooling. I can log in directly to NSX, um, everything very easily. So not just running compute VMs, bare metal servers, uh, but also your own virtualization platform, all that is possible in the Oracle Cloud. Now, one final thing I want to demonstrate to you that you can also import your own compute environment, your own virtual machines uh, from your on-premise environment. So I can go to my object storage and I already have created a bucket here called import bucket. And in here I can upload uh, any virtual machine that I was running in my own environment on-premise. So I can click here on upload and I will be uploading a virtual machine from my VMware environment. So my on-premise VMDK file, and I'll call this my imported VM. And I'll upload this virtual machine into the Oracle Cloud. And then I can go to my compute custom images. And here I can import now that custom image that I have uploaded. So we support natively uh, VMDK files, we support uh, QCAL files. Um, so I can say this was my imported, uh, imported VM. I'll specify the operating system that it was running. It was a Linux VM running. And I'll choose that object now from my bucket that I have uploaded. It's, it's based on a VMDK file from, from an original VMware file. And I'll specify in what mode I want to run this in. In my case, Paravirtualize is fine. And I click, click, click on import image. So from here, I can create a new VM based on this imported instance. Uh, so my imported uh, VM. And like any other VM, I can choose in which data, si data center I want, uh, what compute shape I want for it. And again, I deploy it in my network. And I'll just click on Create. And that is how easy it is to import your own virtual machines into the Oracle Cloud as well. So thank you very much for watching this episode about compute storage and networking. As I said, there are six other videos that will help you adopt and learn more about the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So I really hope that you do watch the other sessions as well. And don't forget, if you want to get your hands on on the Oracle Cloud, you can request a free account. We will provide you with a 30-day free trial where you can experience any of these services that I have spoken about, but also any of the other platform services. And even after those 30 days, we will still provide you with some basic, always free resources. You can permanently run some compute VMs. You can have a load balancer. We'll provide you with some basic storage. You can run some autonomous databases. All of that permanently for free. So I challenge you. If you want to learn more about the Oracle Cloud, get your hands on dirty and request your own account today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun watching the rest of these videos.